What's up, Galaxy? It's time for Ben the Soup. Soup, the show where everything Star Wars related is up for discussion. I am your host, Gil Garcia. Today in the band to take, I got my boys with me. Let's give it up for my main little man, Jono Garcia. What's going on? And for my other little brother, Marcus Garcia. What's up, guys? It's been a while, but I'm back. We just want to have a discussion about Star Wars in general. What it's been like for the past year, the past four years, the past 20 years, and the past 40 years. We just had our Star Wars anniversary of 40 years of celebration since A New Hope came out. And we just want to talk about the state of Star Wars, where we're at, and how we feel about it, right? Mm -hmm. So, there's so many things to be excited for. We got episode 9 coming out next year. Who's stoked? I'm stoked. Nervous. Right? I'm nervous. JJ? <laughs> I'm JJ? Not lie. Help me, JJ. It is JJ, though, so. JJ, you're my only hope, right? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, yeah, sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> we've got the Rogue One show coming out, and we've got the Mandalorian coming out. There's so much to be excited about. Let's talk about it. Where are we at, guys? Spill it. Well, it's been about two years since the last video we did. And that was whenever we were hyped on episode seven and Rogue One was coming out. We had so many different theories. <laughs> My views have changed but changed Me drastically. Too. Me too. Since that, Me since too. that video. Mine have too. Really the main thing is slow it down a little bit. Just kind of chill out, listen to the fans more and slow down and just be focused. So what do you mean? You're like, okay, so it's too much Star Wars at one time. Cause I'm with you, dude. Like I remember, I was like, "Bring on the Star Wars!" I could take it to me, but ah, you know what? You're right, dude. We mm -hmm. we kind of jumped the gun a little bit. Just right? settle down, focus on one thing at a time, and try let's and get, get it right. Job. It's get really it right. more focus on quality than quantity. Mm -hmm. Let's get it right, guys. Yeah. Let's get it right. So. We just watched episode eight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna like go on record. I'm not scared. I don't. I don't really know. I don't care. Episode eight, guys, is not my best. It's not my favorite. No, it sucks. Yeah. You can say that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. But you know what? Solo. Solo mm -hmm. was sick. Good movie. I enjoy Solo a lot. I love Solo. Yeah, it was a very fun movie. You know what I hate what happened in Solo? What? Is that Solo got such a bad rap because of episode eight. Nobody went to see the freaking movie, dude. Mm -hmm. The it's movie true. was awesome. It was, a, it was a really good movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know what? It was great, dude. Uh, Chewie was a rock star. I love it. And I'm so great. It was mm -hmm. awesome. That was one of my favorite parts of the whole movie. Um, I think Solo really would be an awesome Star Wars movie if we didn't have that divide right now mm -hmm. with the Star Wars fan base. And you know what? The Star Wars fan base would not be so divided. And this is my opinion, right? I'm not, I don't know everything. I'm not the smartest guy, but if. Lucasfilm, I don't know, I want to call out Kathleen Kennedy. I don't know who's in charge, Bob Iger, Disney, whatever, I don't know. But if they just kind of like accepted, hey, we hear there's a problem, let's fix it, let's go forward. We know what the fans want, let's take care of you guys. You know, everything would be good, right? But this past year, man, it was a lot of like hate and like even the creators of Star Wars doubling down and just like talking smack to the fans, dude. Mm -hmm. That really hurt me and turned me yeah. off, mm. right? Some of the novel writers were just like, no, you're a bunch of man babies in your basements and you know, you're just, you know, anti-feminine and you're racist, Rose Tico, no, okay, guys. Whatever, man. Dude, that's crazy. Oh, that's ridiculous. I'm not a man baby, you know? I go to work, I pay my taxes, I uh, I work at a corporate office. Jonathan works at the corporate office with me. Marcus is about to, he's in college, he's going to college, he's gonna be some executive somewhere. We're not man babies, mm -hmm. you know? We're not man babies. We just grew up with these stories that George Lucas gave us 
And we love these movies, man. They're more than just movies to us. You know, it's almost like a way of living and, you know, things that you can really get into. And it just, it sucks and it hurts that the creators talk crap about you whenever you express your opinions. Yeah. It's, it's been like that for a couple of years for everything, though, because in my life, my, growing up, I had two loves. It was Star Wars and football. Mm. And even in football, all it was is just every time you put on Sports Center or anything like that, it's just talking about politics, who's kneeling for the anthem, who's doing this, who's doing that. That's all they talked about. It was never about, like, the actual sport. And then here in Star Wars, it's just, it's the same thing. And that's all, that's, that's all it seems like it is. And now is the opportunity for Lucasfilm to go back to its roots and let and make it, let a hero take us out from all of that. Right. Mm-hmm. For sure. Absolutely. And you know what? I heard the last, like, conference call that Bob Iger gave was that, you know, they realized that there's a problem with Star Wars. And I appreciate that. You know, honestly... Mm-hmm. I, I, I do honestly think that they tried to do good with The Last Jedi, but doubling down and going against the fans and all that, nobody's for that. They got right? they got defensive because they spent a lot of money, yep. and they put, to them, they put a lot of love, I guess. Right. But, I don't know, they get defensive. I, sure. I, I understand that. That's, that's fine. No, you're right. You're right. If you can, like, I've got so much more respect for you. If you can just like own, hey, mm-hmm. I messed up, yep. you're right, you know, this means this much more to these people, I'm not gonna just like double down and be like, oh no, you're dumb, you're some man baby in your basement, no, dude, you know, we're not all like that, so. On, on the flip side though, uh, I also don't have any sympathy for you, sorry. It, you know, you know what you're getting into. This is Star True. Wars. True. This is yeah. Star Wars. This mm-hmm. is one of the most popular franchises ever. Yeah. You know what you're getting into, and so if you're going into it like a sensitive baby, then sorry, like you're not the you're not the man for the job. No matter what you do, even if it's the most perfect movie, nowadays you're gonna get some kind of backlash from Star Wars fans because it'll never be like the original three or something like that. Yeah. That's so right, guys. And you know what? You know what I miss about George? Is he never... Okay, so the prequels came out, and people were like, dog him for the prequels. Episode one, two, three. They, like, gave him so much crap. But he never got on Twitter and Facebook and were like, oh, you're stupid, you know, whatever. You're just racist and all that. He, like, took it as a creator and just put it out there. You know what? This is my movies. I put it out there. This is what it is. That kind of deal. This is what's in my head. This is Mm -hmm. my story. Here it is. Take it or leave it. Right, dude. Exactly, man. So maybe back then we were mad at him for not listening to the fans. Sure. But now, today, we respect it. And there are a lot of lovers of the original. Totally. Of the prequels now. You're so right, dude. I watched episode one last night, and I kid you not, I called both these guys, and I was like in tears. Oh my god, I missed this movie, and I remember we were playing in the backyard, playing action figures, and it was like the best moment in my entire life. You know, that those are the memories that I love and cherish, and I'll never like let them go. Like, we're sitting in a room of Star Wars right now, and a lot of those toys... You know, me and John have played with, you know, it, that's what it's all about. But whenever you're like told, oh, no, you're just racist and you're dumb. Mm-hmm. And you don't know what the heck you're talking about. Uh, I, I have no sympathy for it at that point. But J.J. Abrams is back at the helm of episode nine. So I've I don't know. I've heard rumors that it's going to be a course correction that, it, you know, they're gonna do something right with Luke. It, I, I don't know. I've got a lot, to, uh, lots and lots and lots of optimism about what's gonna happen in this next movie. And I think Disney really needs to like freaking hit a home run on this. Otherwise, it's just not gonna be good news. I don't know. Yeah. So my think? my first gut reaction whenever Disney bought out a Lucasfilm, I was nervous. I was like, you know, it's a really big company. 
And of course, like, I love Disney. They, they also own ESPN and they own ABC. They have all these different companies that thrive on, that thrive. And so, like, that made me open up a little bit. And then after episode seven, I was like, wow, this is incredible. They did a great job. Right. I'm behind, the, I'm behind you fully. Like, the last video we did said that, you know what, I'm glad you're spitting out movies here and there. But it, I'm going to go back with my gut reaction that I'm still a little nervous from Disney. Yes, sure. I want more Star Wars movies. It's great. Man, you got to slow down. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. the last thing I wanted to do is turn into the Avengers. Because the, aver- the first Avengers movie was incredible. And then you had, you had like the Iron Man, you had Captain America. All these movies were, were amazing. Right. But then now it seems like, oh, here's another Avengers movie. Here we are. Like, it's the same thing over and over. Yeah. I don't want it to get, like, overkill, man. So we've got episode nine, which I, I've heard. Like, the rumors that I'm hearing now is that it's going to be a course correction. And, you know, if you love episode eight, no, no bad blood. You know, there, there are a lot of things. We just watch episode eight. There was a lot of things that we praised about it. We're like, man, the intro was awesome. Mm-hmm. The bombers were kind of visuals are great. Yeah, yeah, visuals right. Are good. The visuals were great. The bombers were a little like, does the science work? Maybe not, but it was still cool, right? Still cool to look at. Uh, flying Princess Leia in this like. In vacuum of space was a little mm-hmm. like just yeah. how does she even get back into the ship? Mm-hmm. And like nobody even says it. Oh, what the heck? Leia's like pulling, force pulling yourself back, and they just like oh, here's oh, Leia. Yeah. Here you are. Yeah, seriously. Okay. The Luke part, the Luke. Uh, scene, every scene with Luke, I just like oh, why is this happening? So scared. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But. Ridiculous. I like what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that we know there's a problem. We know we hear you. It's, uh, that's all we've been asking for. We hear you. We know what your you know what your complaints are. JJ, you better tie this up tight, bro. Tie it up tight. Mm-hmm. You better bring Luke back. <laughs> However, it's gotta be done. Let him come back for like 15 minutes and be the most awesome, epic Jedi you've ever seen. And then let him fade off in the Twin Suns. I don't know. I wish that would have happened in episode eight. Cool. Mm-hmm. We got the Mandalorian show coming out on Disney's like streaming service, mm-hmm. right? Mandalorians, Boba Fett is my favorite like all time character. I've got a Boba Fett tattoo on my leg right now. So I'm really looking forward to that that TV series. We got the Rogue One show coming out with Diego Luna. Diego mm-hmm. Luna is one of my favorite actors yeah. ever. That's happening. So I've got a lot of optimism and I want to keep going forward and I love Star Wars, but I'm honestly just a little bit bitter right now. And it's just all about the smack talking, guys. Mm-hmm. You know, I want that to stop. Yeah. It honestly, yeah, George created it, but the fans kept it going for 40 years plus. So, so one thing I, I really I was really looking forward to, which I wish they would have gotten episode eight right, or at least not make it suck, um, is because I was, I was really looking forward to like a Blue Squadron. They had, that was rumored, or maybe, It'll be one movie because I know Ewan wants, wants to do that. Love me some Ewan, probably my favorite actor in the Star Wars saga. And I um, just want to get back on track with all of that. I think we should definitely slow down and I think definitely listen to the fans, which I'm glad that they're starting to do finally. Right. And honestly, now that they've officially said that, I am a little more positive and I am a little bit more excited now. And I, I take it all the time you need. I don't care. Take three more years. It doesn't matter. Just make it right. That's, yep. all, that's all that matters to me right now. Yep. No, you're right, man. You know what kind of is like weird about the whole deal, right? So you hear these words coming from Bob Iger, who's like the CEO of Disney. But where's Kathleen at, right? Uh, I don't know. Again, I don't want to seem like the anti-feminine guy or whatever but you know 
If you're gonna wear a shirt that says the force is feminine and you know females are the way of the force and all this other like taglines or whatever, that's like not inclusive. That's not a uniting message. You know, I'm all for it. I, I love Ray, I love Jen Erso, and I want like the female vibe to move forward. And I think that females definitely have a place in Star Wars, but to like wear shirts and just say, you know, force is feminine and you know, this blah, blah, blah. It defeats the purpose of equality. It does, it totally does. No, it's ridiculous. And I'll, it's blatantly obvious that choosing one or the other is saying one, oh, this is very powerful, is more powerful than this, or whatever. It defeats the purpose of equality. And that's what originally feminism was, was equality. Hey, you're totally right, Marcus. I couldn't have said it better, dude. Great job. So, going forward though, guys, we love Star Wars. It's been part of our lives since we were born. We were born into Star Wars. Our, pa our dad is the one who really brought us into it from the original trilogy. The, the prequel trilogy was me and Jono. That was our trilogy. And now we're like passing this on to our brother Marcus. So we just want like vibes to be good. We want good stories. But I, I, I don't know, I guess the thing that I'm struggling with the most is the legacy characters giving that proper send off. You know? So one thing I want to ask you though, it's been two years since we've done videos together. Um, <laughs> uh, what are your, at least your top three movies now after, now that we have at least three more movies now, since we did that? I know mine. I know mine. Okay. Who's going first? I'll go first. Okay. Mine is six, four, five. That's crazy because three was your favorite. Mm -hmm. And then seven and then... I don't know what other one. Because yeah. uh, you lost me after you said three. <laughs> <laughs> so Return of the Jedi is your favorite. Which, I, okay, I get that. That's an awesome I love movie. I love Boba Fett, Jabba the Hutt, all that. Then you said four? Mm -hmm. Episode four? Four's great. You said I six, love four. Six, four, and then five? Six, four, five. Six, four, five. I'm glad you put five up and moved it up. <laughs> it's in your yeah. top three at least. Yeah, it's getting there. Right, <laughs> for sure. Mine's got to be five, four, one. Five, four, one. Five, four, one. Nice, dude. That's a good, that's a really good lineup. Love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this may be a shocker, but my top three favorite are right now is episode five. Empire Strikes Back, of course. Uh, that's a perfect movie. It just, it, no matter how you cut it, it is a perfect movie in every way, and I just love it. The surprises, the dramatics are there, the action is there, it's amazing. The visuals, stunning, right? My second favorite is Return of the Jedi, Jabba the Hutt. Man, that was such an impact, the Ewoks. I was young when I watched it. Amazing movie. You know what, guys? To just really get on the bandwagon, Rogue One. Rogue really? One. Rogue One really makes me appreciate Episode Four. Like I'm sure that's I, why that's why it's my second. After I watch Rogue One, I'm excited to watch Episode Four. So, so I've had some mixed feelings about about Rogue One because I don't like Fel Felicity Jones and. Forrest Whitaker, I don't think he should have been in the movie. But, because I'm more of a fan of like the no-name actors mm -hmm. and actresses. Of course, with the exception of Sam Jackson. Because he's... Sam Jackson. Sam Jackson. Yeah. Only guy that put BMF on his lightsaber handle. Nice. <laughs> That's great, yeah. But, uh, but with Rogue One, I, I've seen it a lot. I've seen it uh, so many times. Mm -hmm. But it seemed like, back, back then, it seemed like... Every time I'd watch it, I would like it less and less. But then episode eight came out, <laughs> and I appreciate it so much. But I will say, the Vader scene is probably one of my favorite scenes in the entire in, in the entire series. Mm -hmm. Crazy, right? The entire it's saga. Insane. That scene, I was in tears. I was blown away seeing Vader in his prime, 
Just yeah. demolishing people. Yep. Yeah. You know what that is, dude? That is classic giving the fans what they want. Exactly. Give the fans what they want. They're going to love that freaking movie. And then, like, pass the torch on. That's all I wanted for Luke. That's Mm -hmm. all I ever wanted for Luke. I didn't want him to be some, like, like, force projection. I wanted Luke to show up for, like, give him, give me, I don't know, 10 minutes of Luke doing some Force Unleashed, grabbing like two AT-AT mm-hmm. AT Walker's heads and like smashing them together, doing like some triple barrel roll flip and just like shocking everybody. Do his Jedi Master Luke thing and then let him die and fade off in the Twin Suns. You pass this off to Rey, make your own story, your own saga, whatever the heck you want to do, but just like pass the torch, right? Do it right. Give the fans what they want. That's what Marvel's doing. Marvel, like, treats them right. Give them... Honestly, they do. They Mm -hmm. stick to the comic books as I... I, Like, they stick to the comic books, and that's what makes fans happy. And they've been following them for years and years, dude. Like, adding Spider-Man to the Avengers was a little skeptical at first, but the the new Spider-Man's incredible. Yeah. I love that Spider-Man. Yeah. Did a good job. It's good, man. You take care of your fans, then you, then Disney, you can do whatever the heck you want. You know, take it to some other galaxy, whatever you want to do. But just, you got to treat it with respect and you can't, you can't double down. You can't call us names. You can't come back at us and say that we're stupid man babies. And then we're anti-feminism and just, that's not going to work for your business model, guys. I say just make episode 9 rated R. No, oh, <laughs> in two movies. Make episode 9 two movies. You just need two movies. Go all out, rated R. Yeah. Heads flying everywhere. Right. <laughs> yeah. Do it. I've heard that episode 9. So I've heard that JJ's taking control again. And it's going to be a perfect. course correction. Course correction. Absolutely. Uh, make it 10 if you have to. Save a lot of work. Right. So, you know, Ryan Johnson, thanks for... Nothing. You know, trying. <laughs> Thanks for trying, Ryan. But Thanks for making me feel weird. Oh. Watching Luke drink from the teat. The teat! <laughs> Luke drinking from titties! <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. You know, uh, I appreciate what you tried to do, but, you know, go, go. Okay, go Bye. away. Go do your yeah. movie, whatever you're going to do. Yeah. Have an yeah. awesome career. Wish you nothing but the best, but... We gotta, we gotta fix things, y'all. Yep. We gotta fix things. Star Wars comes first. For real. Yeah, we've put too much time, effort, money into <laughs> this franchise, dude. It's a way of life for us, guys. I mean, you spent a dollar on Rose. <laughs> I did pay four quarters for Rose Tika. <laughs> I did pay four quarters for Rose Tika. I bought her. I did buy the figure. She's up on my shelf right now. But you know what, guys? It, it is time for a course correction. I think it's time to unite everybody back again. I don't want to be like a hater. I don't want to be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to be mad about it. I want to be critical. Mm-hmm. Right. I want to be like excited and energetic and like, oh, what's going to happen next? Positivity is the way to go because negativity is not going to fix anything. Never. Like after watching episode seven, because we saw it in the theaters together, whenever, yeah, we saw it in Louisville. Yeah. Whenever we walked out of there, I had no idea what to say. I was like, I was speechless because it was a really good movie and I just liked it. And that was incredible. Yep. After watching episode eight, that was the most bummed out I've ever been after coming out of a theater. Not even watching a Star Wars movie. I was just coming out of a theater. I saw Master of Disguise in the theater. Oh, <laughs> what? You remember the Dana turtle, Carvey? The turtle turtle gun. <laughs> With Dana Carvey. Alright, and you were more pissed off. Yeah, that was a lot more. <laughs> I was just pissed. It was such a horrible movie. That's crazy, man. I can't even, like, comprehend. Yeah, I was, honestly, I felt I had a lot of anger. Don't get me wrong. There are a lot of things I love about Last Jedi. You know, the, the intro was great. Intro, opening scene were incredible. And if you want to do right, put Poe in a better <sighs> spot. Poe is such Jeez. a great character. He's, uh, he's so incredible. If they would just let him do more... In that movie probably wouldn't have been that bad. Right. 
it's Agreed. more it's more of that just like men are stupid and mm-hmm. you know women step are, aside oh uh, holdo that's i i can't swallow that pill of holdo mm-hmm. the way animal and bar went out i just i can't swallow that pill either it's hard for me guys it's hard very hard mm-hmm. what's um with one thing you hope to see in episode nine what do you what do you want? What do you want from episode nine? I want to see Luke go off. That is definitely something I would love to see. Just somehow bring, bring Luke back. Somehow, some way, you got to make Luke come back. Do what you did with Vader in Rogue One. Yeah. But with Luke. Right. That's exactly what we want. Right. Luke's gotta do something. And you know what? It doesn't have to be about a Luke story. It doesn't have to be a Luke movie. Mm-hmm. Just let him come back in some awesome way. Kick some major butt. Let him fade off. Give it to Ray. You know, Obi Wan's gonna come back. I want to see. I want to see Hayden. I want to see Hayden come back <laughs> as a Force Ghost mm-hmm. and slap everybody. <laughs> You're all stupid. <laughs> This is... Hayden's not the worst thing anymore. No. (laughs) No. You know what? That's crazy, because she freaking two years ago was hating on Hayden. (laughs) I want Hayden back now. (laughs) That's what you did to me, Ryan Johnson. You made me miss Hayden. (laughs) You took it that low that I want Hayden Christensen back. I want Hayden back. I did gain a lot of respect for one Jar Jar Binks, too. After seeing Rose. Me too. <laughs> I want to fight for Jar Jar, man. I want Jar Jar Binks to come back. So I do. talked earlier. I said, make, make me feel weird. Probably the most uncomfortable part in that movie is watching Rose and Finn kiss. At the end. <laughs> uh-uh. Uh-uh. Unnecessary romance. And it's just, it's awkward. And it's, it, no, why? it didn't feel right at all. Yeah. And I love like the, <laughs> the Star Wars executives trying to come to her defense and I mean it's not really her fault she's doing her job and yeah don't, not really hating on her it's she's just, not a bad actress either not bad. she's she's okay like she's it's not her fault no except but the writing she had the Jake Lloyd effect yeah nobody's gonna really right. take her seriously anymore you're totally right dude she's so, gonna be the you know the stain on that whole movie yeah. And you know what sucks? It's not, I don't know, it's not racial, dude. It's, it's, I don't know, it's never been like that for us. And that's the crappy part. We can't, like, hate the character just because she's a bad character. People think that, oh, it's because she's Asian and stuff like that. Right. It's, mm-hmm. it, once you start mixing politics with it, it takes, it's impossible to be, like, have an opinion about anything. In that. Yep, yep, you're totally right, guys. Exactly. But what I want to see in episode nine I want to see a ghost, Ewan McGregor, yes. Obi Wan. Yes. Mm-hmm. That'll that'll warm my heart. I wanna I wanna at least hear Qui Gon. I know Qui Gon was like figuring it out, and he never manifested himself as a Force spirit, but we heard his voice in the Clone Wars. So mm-hmm. if we could hear, or in the deleted scene from Episode Three, if we saw, if we could hear Qui Gon, I'm gonna crap my pants. If we could <laughs> see Qui Gon, I might lose it. If yeah. Liam Neeson comes back, dude, it's gonna be great. I honestly, really, really, really want Hayden back. I really do. I think that's gonna be a really good way to tie everything together. I All agree. three I trilogies, mm-hmm. you know. One of the three. Right. Kylo, what are you doing? You stupid. I've been through this. Right? Yeah. I want Hayden back. Mm-hmm. And I want Yoda back. Because I, I did I did like the Yoda. Yoda scene. Episode eight. That was Perfect. It was. Amazing. That is a prime example of giving what the fans need. Right. Because when, right. when I saw the ears, I was like, oh my gosh. You're right. And incredible. he was a puppet, which is perfect. Puppet yep. Yoda. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, perfect. I do like episode two. So, unlike other people, I like the episode two Yoda. It's a great Yoda. It's mm-hmm. way better than episode one Yoda, but... Oof. <laughs> the first episode one okay. was we did CGI. That's the only Very exception good. I have. I'll give for CGI Yoda. Yeah, right. My boys, I am still a very much lover of Star Wars, and I, it's always going to be a part of my life. 
I think that taking a step back and giving some time for Star Wars to breathe is a really, really, really good idea, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So next year, we've got episode nine. We've got J.J. Abrams at the helm. I, I honestly truly feel like he is listening to the fans. And I think he's going to do something special. It's what I can hope for. Right? Because I don't want to be angry about this. Because JJ is a fan. Right. Yeah, he would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally is. So. Always stay positive, be patient, and hope for the best. That's perfect. That's perfect. Live long and prosper. Oh, hey. <laughs> you know what? At this point in time, we can learn from other franchises that we can learn from Star Trek. Well, let's do it, JJ. Did you know uh, I was going to go on a date? A girl told me she was a Star Trek fan, man. Mm. Turn it down. Yeah. <laughs> nope. True story. That's how deep it grows, bro. Yeah. That's how deep, uh -uh. That's how deep yeah. the blood runs, man. We turn down dates. True, true story. I'm on the same page. Like, she, was, so. she was a legit fan, though. Like, her and her family went to conventions and stuff. Wow. If she just, like, liked the movies, then that's fine, whatever. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> uh, uh -uh. if you're that deep Get into out. it that you, could, you call yourself a Trekkie, oof. I'm, I'm, that I'm word cool. is that word is cringy. <laughs> it's crazy. Shout out to fanboys. Ah, oh, such a great <laughs> movie. I love fanboys. I love fanboys too. <laughs> you know what? But there is so much to look forward to. We've got The Mandalorian coming out. That's the first live action TV show made by Star Wars. Not only it's helmed by John Favreau, the guy Whoa, who I didn't know that. This is the guy who like punted the Marvel universe. Right? Mm -hmm. John, he made, he made one of the greatest movies ever made, Elf. Yes! Oh, yeah. You're right! We just watched that. <laughs> He's a great director, writer. Iron Man. Yeah. He, Marvel would be nothing without John Travel. Honestly, it wouldn't. Yeah. Like, it, the first Marvel movie was Iron Man. And John Favreau created that. So. I've, I've always loved him from the days that he was on the few episodes of Friends to like. Right. To now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's doing a Mandalorian movie. Do I, yeah. oh, do I even have to show? I've got Mandalorian tattooed on my <laughs> leg. Boba Fett is my bread and butter. He's talking about some like. And I think the guy who's playing a Mandalorian is actually Hispanic. I, you know, again, That'd yeah, cool. I go political, though. right? I'm not yeah. political <laughs> yeah. right now. I'm just talking about this mess, but you know, it feels good. You know, it feels good. You got a freaking Mandalorian fighter who's like Hispanic, dude. Yeah, come on, can't go on space for real, uh, absolutely. So, <laughs> I'm super excited about that. We got Rogue One coming out, the Rogue One TV show, yeah. Diego Luna, uh, another Hispanic. Come on, guys. Another Hispanic, right? <laughs> Let's bring the, the Hispanics into this. We're going to yeah. save Star Wars. <laughs> no. Let's stick with the British. For real. Yeah. <laughs> I do love the British accents, though. I love the Obi Wan. Iconic. Right. Yeah. And we need an Obi Wan movie. We need a Ewan McGregor. I think Ewan that's what Solo is leading to with uh, Darth Maul. Really? Ooh. That, would be sweet. that was a really good scene. That was. Seeing Darth Maul. Yep. So, if we can kind of stay on that path, respect Star Wars, keep the politics out of it. Yeah. You know, just give the fans kind of what they want. Then do your own thing, right? Let's send Luke, Leia, Han off, you know, with a proper send-off. Then, let's get into the Knights of the Old Republic. Let's get into those, like, territories, unexplored. Let's have fun, let's make it epic, and let's just start something great from a galaxy far, far away. Galaxy, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, we would always appreciate a like on our video. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe on YouTube to stay up to date on everything Banta Suit. We do reviews, we do customs, we talk about everything Star Wars. My name is Gil. My name is Marcus. And I'm Jono. And this is Bantha Soup.